So talking about chapter three is the concept of neural processing. And so all of you should have had biopsychology before coming into this course. So you should have a pretty good understanding of neurons and neural processing as it is. But we're just going to cover uh, some of the uh, types of neural processing that's going to be, in this case, specific division, but uh, know that vision is just an example and this kind of neural processing uh, happens for other sensory systems as well. So when it comes to neural processing, you know that is just the interaction of the signals of many neurons across the brain and this process occurs for all brain processing. Um, a specific kind of neural processing is lateral inhibition. And we're going to talk about lateral inhibition in this example uh, in terms of vision. So when it comes to um, the, uh, the visual system, lateral inhibition is that inhibition that's transmitted across the retina. So this is uh, occurs throughout the visual system, transmitted across the retina. Um, and remember that there is a specific pathway uh, that vision occurs it starts with light, of course, hitting the retina. Then we have um, the rods and cones uh, receiving that uh, information. Then it's going to be passed through to other neurons in the retina, for example, ganglion cells. That information will then all come through and converge to the optic nerve. That information goes through the lateral geniculate nucleus, which then hits the back of the brain cortex region, the visual processing system, to then make sense of what it is that we're seeing. Lateral inhibition is one of those processes that helps make this happen, um, and we're going to talk about that specifically when it comes to the visual system. But remember that lateral inhibition occurs in other sensory systems like hearing and chemical uh, senses um, but we are going to use the example of vision in this in this particular um, lecture so let's talk about inhibition so inhibition uh, as you know is when a um, neuron does not fire so it's in inhibited right um, and convergence so if you remember from the previous chapter convergence is simply when a number of neurons synapse onto a single neuron okay um, and so that allows uh, some really complex processing to occur. And we're going to talk about how, in the case of liter lateral inhibition, how that works uh, in terms of convergence. And so if you remember from the last chapter, more convergence results in greater sensitivity. And that's where we see rods uh, coming into greater sensitivity, for example, for night vision. Um, and then less convergence, uh, which is what we see in cones, results in better detailed vision. Now, how is it that we know about lateral processing? What What is it that... Uh, that that has been done in the past, experiments that have been done that have given us the information that we know about lateral inhibition. Well, it turns out that the horseshoe crab or the limulus has actually given us a lot of really great information about the uh, lateral inhibition that occurs in the retina. So the great thing about the horseshoe crab is that it's got this lateral eye that looks a bit like a um, an insect eye. And so um, the cool thing about the horseshoe crab is that it has these individual um, receptor, photoreceptor units that allows us to be able to study them in a way that we couldn't do at the time in a human eye. So in the 1950s, uh, Wagner and Ratcliffe uh, actually did a series of experiments and published a study in 1956 using the horseshoe crab uh, and uh, really helped us understand what lateral inhibition is in the visual system. And then later we can kind of talk about how we take this information and then apply it to uh, human visual systems. So let's look at the uh, the the eye of the limulus or the, the horseshoe crab. So um, like I said, the limulus is chosen because the eye is made up of hundreds of tiny structures. It's, it's what we refer to as a compound eye. So if you look at like a, a fly, for example, or a bee, you can see these tiny little units here that make up 
one of the eyes. And so these little tiny uh, um, individual photoreceptor units or facets, um, each one of these gives us uh, the ability to be able to um, actually in an individually test each one of these little units. So here, um, what, what we have in the uh, horseshoe crab eye is these tiny little structures, right? And these little structures are called um, omatidiums, okay? And or uh, an omatidium, and that's the singular, and then um, omatidia are the plural. So uh, all of these are omatidias, right? Okay, and an individual one is an omatidium. So right here, a single omatidium, you can actually take one of these and test it, okay? So we can actually record from a single receptor, and so we can shine light into the lens of just one of these little facets, okay? And be able to test the firing rate of the nerve fiber, and be able to determine if we shine light into this individual one, what happens to these other uh, individual units? What is that doing to these other units? And that's something that's really cool because we can say, well, what happens when one receptor gets information? What happens to the neighboring receptors? So, <clears throat> When they did the experiment, okay, they, for example, here, these would be individual receptors right here. They would shine a light into, let's say, receptor A. And then they would have this nerve fiber, um, rec a recording uh, uh, electrode on it to record it to see what is the firing rate, how many action potentials at what in, in a period of time, um, fired. And so when they shine light into one receptor, okay, this gives the information of the firing rate of that receptor by itself, the individual one. Because remember I said that you're able to pull that out uh, and actually test the firing rate. Now, the interesting thing was, so if you pull one out and you just look at the firing rate of receptor A here, you see that it's got a really rapid um, uh, firing rate, okay? See, they're very close together. It's very rapid. A lot of information is going through from receptor A. So that's what happens if you only shine light into one particular um, receptor. Now, when it comes to uh, deciding to choose other receptors to shine light in, they found that it changed the intensity of this particular receptor. So when they stimulated these receptors over here and shine light into these other individual neurons uh, or individual receptors, excuse me, what they found is that it changed the intensity of this particular receptor. So when they decided to shine light into B and A, okay, so these together, so B plus A, they found that it reduced the intensity of A's firing. So the decrease in the firing of receptor A was found to be caused by lateral inhibition. So the lateral plexus, which is a structure um, that is joins these receptors sort of laterally, right, side to side, okay, um, what happens is, is that that lateral plexus, um, these fibers, reduce the intensity of A's firing, okay? And when you change the intensity, so if you shine a bunch of light into B, okay, 
and A, you'll find that it decreases the intensity of the firing even more. So here, this is a very intense firing of A. When you combine these, lateral inhibition inhibits A from firing as frequently with just A and B together. And then when you increase the intensity of the light, so you shine even more light, okay, then that is going to make A fire even less. So this is odd, right? You say, well, what does this have anything to do with human vision, okay? What is it about the lateral plexus that is so important? Well, these fibers of the lateral plexus, which is transmitting these signals laterally, okay, and then is working to inhibit A's intensity, okay, what that's doing is it's giving us the same information that happens with human visual sensor sensory systems. And here we can see that the horizontal cells and the amacrine cells actually have the same process as we see what happens with the lateral plexus in the horseshoe crab eye. So just as the lateral plexus transmits these signals laterally and works to inhibit certain receptors, the horizontal and amacrine cells do the same sort of thing across the human retina. Because if you look at the amacrine cells, just for example here, okay, these are A, do you see how they are connected and are able to move this information laterally across different cells, which can work to inhibit signals? And this whole process can help us distinguish things like edges. So if I have a set of bars that are gray and they're different shades of gray, by inhibiting different lines of cells, it allows us to see the different edges and not everything kind of is one piece. We can actually see where things begin and end, where the light hits certain items for us to be able to distinguish the edges around those items. So if you have any questions about this process, please let me know. Um, and I'm going to do other videos for other processes as well.